Hello. In this video, I will try to show you how to implement the first stage of a continuous integration methodology. So, continuous build, uh, continuous deploy, and basically we will also try to do continuous delivery. Uh, we won't be focusing on continuous tests uh, here because uh, the unit testing is something that should be covered uh, through different topic. This is more advanced topic. But basically, we will do this uh, session focused on implementing continuous build, continuous uh, deploy, and continuous delivery with the mobile first platform uh, and also open source tools. So, uh, our session will be split it in two parts. First part, I will try to explain what the general process should look like and what basically steps you need to do in order at least to make a build, uh, make a deploy and make a release. And second thing, we will try to arrange this and automate this process uh, as a part of our uh, kind of build scenario. Uh, you need to have some prerequisites in order to start with this and basically we'll need to have the following. We'll need to have our mobile first platform server installed I'm using version 7.0, but you can use also version 6.3. If you will be using actually the older, older versions like uh, Worklight 6.2 or 6.1 or even earlier, you need to be uh, well, you need to be to adopt the scripts a little bit because uh, the product was renamed and some of the comments and some of the behavior has been changed. Uh, so you need to refer to knowledge center documentation to the appropriate version if you are using not of those two, so 6.3 and 7.0. So basically, I have here the server installed, console, totally fresh without any apps, without anything. Um, and I also have the application center here on my machine. And this is uh, again fully fresh. Uh, I will be showing you this tutorial on two machines actually. One is the build machine the, with Mac OS. Uh, actually this is my host machine but I'm pretending that this is build machine in our scenario. The second machine uh, which in our case will be the machine that will hold the continuous integration server and will initiate the build on remote build machine. Uh, and on this Mac OS uh, will be based on Linux uh, and uh, basically it will monitor the source code repository and for this we will use GitHub as the simplest option to showcase you this scenario. Uh, so the whole idea will be like this. Uh, the developer will make a changes in the code, commit his change in a code repository then continuous integration server will monitor changes in code repository and if he will find any, he will trigger build on remote build machine to download the latest changes, build his application for Android and iOS environment, install the application on mobile first platform server and then also release the application so we will have IPA and APK file, signed files for both of the platforms and we will release them to application center. So this is the complete overview of our process. And in order to do that, we will also need to be sure that we have some prerequisites uh, in terms of toolings installed on our machines. So on Mac machine, uh, I need to be sure that I have the following. First of all, uh, in, in my case, in my scenario, I will need to have the command line tools in order to show you how to create an app, to start an app and prepare basically the, the scenario. In, in the real life, on the machine that you will be doing build, uh, there is no need to install um, about first uh, platform command line tools. You can just uh, use different uh, jar files and uh, basically this is how we will do it. But anyway, if you will if you would like to complete the same thing that I will be doing, you will need to have a command line interface installed and configured. This can be checked by running this command in your terminal, which MFP. The same for AND. You will need to have AND in your path, so this should be accessible globally. Then you will need to 
also install command line tools and Xcode for macOS. And this is really important because usually people install on the Xcode without command line tools. In order to check if they are installed, you can run which uh, Xcode build. If it will show you something like this, user bin Xcode build, it means that uh, command line tools are installed. We'll also need to be sure that uh, we have uh, Android SDK and we have all necessary tools and platform tools added to the path again. And this can be checked by running which Android. And we will also need to be sure that ADB is there. So this is, those are some basics that we need to have uh, on our build machine. And the last thing, but not least, is uh, Java. So we need to be sure that uh, Java uh, actually installed. So it should be JDK. I recommend version 7. Um, and basically you need also export Java home. So in order to check the easiest option is to do echo of Java home. If it will show you something like this, in my case, it's library Java, Java virtual machines, GDK. And uh, this means that it, it's working, it's installed. So it's, it's like it should be. Uh, and basically we can start with that. If you don't have anything from the following, so please install before you continue with this tutorial. So our next step uh, is general review of the process. Uh, I mean, in terms of what we need to do on our machine to get the application, to get it build it, to get it deployed, to get it released. And uh, I will show you the description that is valid for, for my machine because we will be kind of, uh, educating based on, on this. So in my case, because I don't have any app prepared, everything will start with a simple application creation. Uh, was also adding some kind of environments for iPhone and Android. So I will just create an app called uh, CI Demo inside CI Demo project and uh, create environment for iPhone and Android. So this is the first step and let's accomplish that. So I'm creating a CI demo project and then I'm creating the hybrid app inside. It doesn't really matter what kind of app, but in our case it's better and easier to demonstrate on hybrid. So let's name it CI demo. Yeah, so basically the next step is to go the side, inside the app and add the environments. In our case, it will be iPhone and Android. Basically, that's all. So we have now iPhone and Android environment ready. And next step that we will do is actually we will talk a bit about the, the build. So as you see, the second step for us is mobile first platform build. So of course, if you have common line tools installed on, on the PC, you can type MFP build and it will build all the environments if you're located in the application folder. But the trick is that if you're doing that for a remote PC, most probably you will need to override the config. So you will need to override the server location in order this, to this app to, to be able to connect to a server and everything like that. So the easiest way to do this, so part of the easiest way is to use uh, our uh, prepared scripts for, for Ant. So basically you can find an uh, article on Knowledge Center, how to do that. 
there, there is a specific uh, page saying building applications and adapters and in order to prepare this build you basically need to write a simple unscript uh, not even write just copy what you see here and modify it with your parameters and the trick is that uh, the only thing that is missing is the jar files that it will refer to and uh, you will need to get it from your uh, installation uh, from, from your mobile first platform server installation uh, it's located uh, under your server installation pass and then you can navigate to a folder called worklight server and you see those three important jar files there so uh, you can copy them and put wherever you want uh, basically this is uh, what I did I put them in a folder called bin and I will use them to, 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 to do a build and basically the only thing that uh, I will need in order to do a build I will need this script and uh, I will need to launch it basically so let me show you the script itself so the script uh, in my case looks like this uh, I have the simple file that will do a build of an app I won't be building any adapters because I, because I don't have them but uh, for doing that I simply need to add another uh, target like it says on a knowledge center uh, in our case I will be doing it only for adapter I need to specify the server host uh, application folder native prefix uh, for, for project and output folder um, and also the location of course of, of my jar file in order to do that um, not with a hard code but in, in some kind of smarter way uh, I've added a properties file here, config properties, and in config properties basically I have a location of my binary folder where, where I have those jar files and other things that we will discuss a bit later. Um, I have also the, um, some predefined variables here for location of worklight server, also admin service pass, security options, a user password, runtime name, application folder, application pass, uh, uh, output folder, release folder, and we will talk about this a bit later, application name and application center details, and we will talk about them a bit later. So let's continue with build. Basically, uh, I will specify the, the host, application folder, prefix, and output, and that's it, as I said. So if I will go to the build folder and because my config properties are already set up to, to use uh, this file in order to cut our time so as you can see I've already put it the required information like app folder to CI demo inside CI demo project like output folder uh, to to bin uh, and app pass to, to the CI demo uh, all well up which will be created after my build and everything so I've prepared uh, but of course uh, you will need to fill it firstly before the build uh, this is one time operation and even better if you will be able to do it as like input parameters so then basically when we will be doing the automation you will be able to kind of replace those parameters of course you can do it with plain and specifying something like uh, and then minus f then the file name then minus uh, big d and then the parameter name and the value name so this also can be an option for you so basically uh, I need to do build and build uh, minus f and specifying the file in my case it's built xml and it's it will trigger a build for me so i will build my app for a native platform for android and ios and yep you can ignore this warning for android it will work um, so basically let's go back to our folder of our project so we will continue with Android this will be our next step and inside Android after the build you should have the native folder 
And next our step in, in the discussion is uh, basically the explanation of the Android native build. So yeah, of course, if you're using the studio, if you're using uh, any other things like, um, I mean, native Android studio, or some kind of it is that allows you through the plugins click and create the APK in a few easy steps. It's much easier, but this cannot be automated. And our task is to prepare everything for a fully automated cycle. And in this case, the best op the basic and the best option will be to create the command line scripts. And then we will need to understand uh, in order to do that how those scripts should work and what steps we should pass. So uh, basically, the first thing that you will need to do after creation and building of, of Android project with mobile first platform, you will need to add uh, the, the build file for that project to use the native command line tools from, from Google. And this can be achieved with uh, simple sync, uh, simple command Android update project and specifying the project location. So uh, we can just do Android update project uh, minus p and here and it will create the build XML file but what is even more important it will prepare for us a project properties and we will need to add some things there so the things that we should uh, add there is basically related to the key store so if you do not have any key store yet, uh, you can create one and the task here uh, will be in order to have the fully signed APK that you can install on every device, not like with no sign, not in debug mode uh, or something like that, but really, really uh, valid APK file which will be signed uh, and properly released, uh, you need to have a key store. So this is the way how to generate the key store from command line. It doesn't need to be necessarily generated through command line. It's up to you how you will do that. But this is just a showcase of how to do it with key tool. Uh, the key tool is basically, uh, usually it's installed with uh, Oracle uh, JDK uh, for, for for most of the cases, it's already there. The only thing is that it's a bit different from the platform's perspective. So if you're running it on uh, Mac OS, uh, you will have uh, one options. If you're running it on, on Linux, some things are missing, like uh, minus no prompt will be looking a bit differently on Linux, but this is not the case for, for our tutorial. So I will generate the key store called test key store. Uh, with a simple uh, alias inside uh, called basically test key. I will specify uh, some dummy password with dummy name and some uh, dummy things uh, like location and whatever. Uh, so this will uh, create a key store for me. It looks like I forgot to remove the old one. I will need to do that. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. So it will create the key store for me. I will be able to see that uh, key store in my folder. So in, in my case, it's a key store folder inside my dev folder. And I have this key store, uh, test key store file created today. Uh, so next step for me will be to add the information about my key store into project properties file. And uh, of course, there are two options. So first option, you can open the text editor, open the project properties file there and add those lines manually. And uh, I mean that uh, each uh, should be the separate line like key.store.password, uh, this one line and then key ls password next line. And basically you need to put four lines. So information about your key store, information about your store password information about your alias and alias password uh, but uh, it also can be done of course through command line and let's do that through, through command line so this will allow me to, to have the information about my key store 
So let's check if it's there. So I will open the project properties file. So let's do it with just cat. So as you can see, uh, I've added uh, four parameters. So store alias, password for store and password for alias. And next thing I can do, I can just say end, end release and it will release my apk file uh, and sign it with, with the key provided in, in that key store. So let's see how it works. So the first time you're doing that, it uh, takes a bit more time for compiling everything. Uh, so it's it's usually about 15-20 seconds if you have quite a uh, speedy PC. Yeah, so uh, I got my apk file signed and it's usually placed inside the bin folder and it's called by the name of our app, then slash release and then uh, apk. Uh, so basically we will need to operate with, with this apk file and actually you can already work with it. So if you will be working with your local device, of course, you can just say and uh, install R and it will mean that it will be installed on your emulator in this release APK file. But because we want to release it to the application center and do everything like an official way, uh, we will need uh, actually to use other tools and in our case, it will be again the end script. Uh, so next our step real to, to this release phase uh, will be actually to, to copy uh, our apk file to release folder. I've just pre prepared the simple, uh, sim simple empty folder called release and uh, I will explain a bit later why I need this. So I will copy my uh, apk file to, to that folder. And next, I will need to do the same for, for iPhone. Uh, so uh, for iPhone, it's a bit different. And the process is a bit more complicated. Uh, the trick about iPhone is actually first, uh, you need to use common line tools. Uh, and uh, those will look for a schema in the, inside your project. And you won't be able to find your schema unless you will open the Xcode. Because the build that is triggered by mobile first platform is, uh, as far as I understood, not generated by default. So the, the way how to achieve this and um, kind of, uh, maybe it's not the best option, but it definitely works, uh, is to open the Xcode and uh, basically give it some time. Usually it's about 2-3 seconds uh, to, to kind of initialize the project, index everything and it will uh, prepare the metadata that allow, will allow you to find the schema during Xcode build. And basically not to have my Xcode opened, I'm using this code. So I'm opening Xcode, uh, having a sleep for 10 seconds to be sure that it will be enough. And then just killing Xcode application. And after that, I'm doing actually the build. So it looks like this. I'm opening the Xcode and it starts processing the app. So as you see, that it's, it's ready. And then when the 10 seconds are passed, it automatically kills the Xcode process. And I can go to next step, which is Xcode build. So basically, I will create an archive based on, on schema. So this is kind of analog to the option archive inside the Xcode that you're usually selecting when you need to release the APK file. So you're doing an archive and then you're selecting the export and then you're doing the signings and getting your IPA file. So you're doing totally the same, but from common line. So uh, I will just put this uh, code here with specifying what is the schema name. In, in Apple, it's a bit different. It's not just the name of the application because, uh, well, this is how it works. 
uh, generally it takes the name of the app and uh, thinking about this as the name of the project plus adding the name of the app again but because it's iPhone it's starting from a big letter even if you typed it from a small letter during the default generation it will be big of course you can change that in, in uh, config files but this is how it looks default and then basically I specify the same name for archive that I will create it doesn't really matter what to say but it's easier to operate with the same names so when I'm uh, creating my archive the next step that I will be able to do is to actually the, create the, the real apk file for uh, my project and basically this can be achieved again with Xcode build command but just uh, with different parameters so I will export my archive uh, in uh, export format IPA uh, and basically I will use the provisioning profile for that and this is the most tricky thing because in order to export the IPA file, export the binary file for Apple of course I will need to sign it with my provisioning profile so uh, the thing how it works here is that you just need to type the name of your provisioning profile if it is already in Xcode so if it's fetched uh, you will be able to use it uh, the name as you as you can see is is pretty much strange so you just need to type it as is with the spaces with a star and with everything and the way how you can find it is basically you will need to open your Xcode then go to preferences uh, there you will be able to see your account and you will need to click uh, on, on your name and view the details for your account and down there in the provision profile sections you should see the name and this is the exact name that you will need to enter in, in that command line uh, script so uh, with all the spaces uh, with all the big letters and small letters so uppercase lowercase stars and everything so this is just exactly the name how it should be looking and basically so when you will enter this uh, you can then also say the name of the APA file that will be created in my case I will just name it CI demo CI demo iPhone So as you can see as a result I, I have the IP file in the same folder. Uh, so I will copy it also to release folder as the last time. So I did the same for Android, I doing the same for uh, iOS. I will explain in, in a minute why I did that. Uh, but our next stop will be actually the deploy. So now when we have our project built and when we actually released the binary files, it's also the good, good moment to deploy our application to mobile first platform server to be able to connect later on uh, with the server. So let's do a deployment. Uh, deployment will be done and uh, again this is this the good way because of course you can you can do MFP deploy and deploy to a local server but this is not what we are trying to achieve we are trying to work with remote server so deploy will be again done with the unscripts and you can again find the examples on knowledge center as always so in my case uh, deploy script looking like this I will need to use a different jar file but from the same folder I will be copied it um, I will need to specify the server URL and uh, admin servers pass, uh, user, password, uh, security options, uh, runtime uh, where I will be deploying my application and the application pass. So uh, again let's go to config and everything is basically here. So uh, application pass means the pass to VL app file and of course if I would like to deploy also the adapters I will need to take another part of code for adapters you can find in knowledge center and you will need to specify the location for those for me it's easier to build uh, all applications uh, all, uh, all environments i mean at once so i'm pointing to the ci demo all the lab in this case and of course as you know they are located in bin folder 
So I can just predict the name of that by uh, combining the name of my app and then uh, slash all dot VL app. Um, so this is this is how it will look uh, for for the server parameters. I'm again using the same so runtime just uh, work light in my case, but it depends uh, what kind of name of runtime of course you have. So this is how it will look. So let me just go to the build folder. And do the same and minus F build XML to run this build script. And it will be doing the deployment. Oh, sorry, I run the build now, of course, deploy. Uh, it will do the deployment on server and uh, basically you can you can uh, deploy it for, for uh, any environment if you will have additional security uh, you will need to as you see here on authorized apps you will need to add some more options but in our case it's just the, the quickest showcase that we can do uh, in order to save time so let's check if our app is there in the console session timeout so yeah the application is there actually now you see that modified date is, is, is now can we see two environments so just as, as we expected so deploy is passed and uh, after deployment our last stop in our process uh, will be actually the release to application center in order to, to have uh, the ability to install this app to our consumer devices. Uh, so, of course, you have different options to provide them with your app. And, of course, in many cases, you can use technologies like Direct Update to deliver changes. Uh, but you will anyway need to initially to release the APK files and to provide them to users somehow. And the good option to do that is, of course, our application center. So the release app uh, is looking a bit more complicated than there is an XML file than, than others. And uh, basically we will need to uh, take another jar files and they can be found uh, again uh, under installation pass of our worklet server, but inside the application center deal inside that pass and then you will be able to find them in, in tools folder you have basically a application center deployer jar file and then json 4j that you will need to, to to copy somewhere or just to put the link location here but then of course you will need to do this deployment on the same machine that's your server installed but so it's better just to copy it somewhere to the build server and use it inside your installation. So uh, I'm importing those two files. Uh, I'm basically doing the upload of all applications that I found in specific deer and in our, my case it's just a release deer. So that is the reason why I was copying those uh, binary files that we created to the release deer. I don't want it to kind of to specify each and every uh, upload to a server from a native folder, so it's better to uh, have one release folder to, that will contain the latest versions. Uh, you will also need to specify whether you want to overwrite everything that is that may be deployed or, uh, already in application center. And uh, of course, you will need to specify the app center context pass, uh, URL, user, and password. Yeah, and the last thing that I'm specifying, I'm actually saying that I will be uploading everything that is named uh, as IPA and APK. So this is this is what will be uploaded. Of course, for other platforms, I will need to, to do a little bit more. So I will need to include other uh, files like SAP for, for Windows Phone, but this is another story. So again, in config file, I have all of those uh, parameters here. Uh, in my case, application center is installed again uh, on, on the same machine and uh, I will use the default user default password, doesn't really matter, it's just a showcase. So I am um, now able just to open my terminal and do the release.
So as you can see, it's successful. So let's check. Again, timeout. Yeah, so our apps were uploaded successfully. So this, this step is also done. So basically what we achieved, uh, we completed the, the whole process, uh, the description of whole process, how it should be in terms of uh, doing everything from, from common line. And we will use those scripts, uh, we will try at least to, to use those scripts now in an uh, automated scenario using, uh, using continuous uh, integration server. Uh, there are a few things that we won't be doing. So uh, first of all, of course, we won't be creating this app once again. So we will be using the same app. Then uh, we won't be uh, basically uh, doing some, some, some small things. I mean, uh, we won't be creating the, the key tool because it will be generated one time and then we will just try to use the same uh, key tool once again. Uh, because it doesn't make sense to override it uh, each time and this is the second thing that we won't be doing. And maybe the last step and the most clever step is just to separate two scripts. I mean have uh, two different processes, so one process um, that will be used for, for complete build and deploy and second process that will be used for release. So in normal work, in normal work workflow, we won't be releasing uh, each time new binaries because we will be using most probably uh, the things like uh, direct update. So the binaries will be created uh, for, for newer versions when we will be migrating like from 1.0 to 1.1. And in all other cases, we'll be using just, just deploy. But this is something related to our job in, in continuous integration server. So we'll talk about it uh, just in a second. Uh, prior to, to start uh, discussion, that things like automation and everything, uh, we need to uh, actually be able to share code between our server, uh, between I mean between the PC of our developer and our build uh, machine. And the best way to do that, of course, is to use some some kind of code repository. And uh, basically, you can use whatever you want. But for me, it's easier to showcase with GitHub because like it's it's the the almost uh, the, the fastest option to do that. So uh, I will create a new code repository called CI Demo uh, on, on GitHub. And then it provides me the, the, the small overview how to uh, actually start working with it in, in my particular app. So basically what I will need to do, so first of all, I need to navigate to the uh, director of my, my project. So. So now we can create our code repository here uh, just by typing git init, for example. And uh, we can also add uh, remote, and uh, we can add connection with this remote repository. And probably we will, we will command anything from, from our uh, project to the remote repository. We need to know a few things. And first of all, I need to know what you should connect and what you should not. So in order to know that, of course, we are going to know the center and let's search for something like code repository. And let's uh, navigate to the article called uh, integrating the source code systems. So as you can see, there is a kind of clear description of your files that uh, should be there and should be excluded. So everything that pointed with this mark should be excluded. And basically you need to prepare the ignore file for, for, for git in order to exclude it. And yeah, the good idea is not to reinvent the bicycle and uh, go with something that already created. So go back to git and just look for a project called MFP git ignore. And of course, big thank you to Andrew. Uh, so this is the, this is the very good stuff. So basically, 
you can have here the complete ignore file it's already prepared for you and you can just take this open your text editor create new file place the text there and save it as git ignore so just navigate to your workspaces to your to, to our project and name it with dot git ignore and yeah and the second thing we need to do is actually we need to save a file called git keep uh, in the folder server java because um, first platform is mobile first platform is near this folder and this is empty for for now and uh, git is not checking empty folders by default so we need to add git keep in order for it to actually check in that folder so just create another file and save it under the name of uh, git keep inside java folder yeah so now basically we can go back to our terminal and add everything we have here and basically we can also commit right away all the changes let's type something like uh, git commit minus m and then the command okay. initial application project commit mm, this will make a commit to our local repository and of course we will need to push it also to a server so we'll need to do it with the command git uh, git push uh, minus u origin master and this will upload all the changes uh, to our master folder uh, strange let me try to pull what is there mm. Okay, it looks like kind of bug, so let's just ignore it. So, uh, we actually are uploading the changes to the remote repository, and when we will complete this, we will be able to see everything in, in GitHub. It will take some time, most probably. Uh, okay, excellent. So now we can see that actually there are files there and uh, everything that we exclude is not there. For example, binary folder uh, that was in our project by, by default and some of the native things like native www uh, folder which is not here. So this is actually working as we expected. So now our idea will be to, to maintain this in a kind of required state. So uh, the idea will be to have the code repository uh, in other machine where we have the CI machine also installed and we will monitor this code repository for changes and we'll push those changes here uh, to be able to kind of update uh, the solution and make a build. So. Uh, Let's continue our session with uh, virtual machine.
So we will use uh, Linux virtual machine with Ubuntu 14.10 inside, but it doesn't really matter what exactly you will be using. So the idea is to go to Jenkins website and it's install the Jenkins continuous integration server. So I will uh, grab the distribution for Ubuntu, but of course uh, you can start with WAR file or distribution for any other operation system that is listed here. So there are two options, either download the dev file, which is the package, or install it uh, by adding the repositories uh, basically to source list and install it with, with standard uh, apt get update and install. The second option is of course greater if you are talking about um, real work because you, then you will be able to update it uh, using, using the standard approach but in order to, to cut our time we will do it this way just with that package. So when Jenkins uh, is installed, we can uh, launch it uh, and basically start using. So in order to do that, uh, we can just open the terminal and type something like sudo service uh, Jenkins start. And then it will start the Jenkins server and now we can go to the web page and navigate to Jenkins console. And the current link is uh, localhost 8080 which is the standard port for Jenkins. And as you can see we now have our kind of Jenkins ready for, for further usage. So. We need to install uh, some plugins in order to, to, to start. So first of all, uh, and, and the main thing, I'm not talking about any beautiful stuff that may be uh, kind of included. So we we'll just need some basics in order to work. And one of them is actually to, uh, to be able to work with Git, we need to install a Git plugin for integration with this source control system. So uh, so the plugin that we are looking at called GitHub plugin and we need to install it. Uh, I will mark to start Jenkins and it will be completed because it, as you can see there are there is a need to restart it because of credentials plugin. So it's already there, it looks like there was a bug uh, that didn't display me that the restart actually. Uh, well, the idea here that uh, we need to create uh, basically a new job 
Uh, for, for us, it's, it will be like freestyle project. We'll specify what we need. So let's call it um, build and deploy. Yeah, this chapter is, is not a really good option. So just as so always build and deploy. And then we need to specify uh, where we will take uh, basically our source code from. So we'll just select git. We'll need to put here the link for our repository. It can be found on GitHub. And I will also need to pass my credentials to it. Uh, so that's all. Um, I don't need anything else, ju just this. Uh, basically, the idea is to pull this repository from time to time. So in my case, let me just do the hardest thing, like one, each and every minute. Uh, we will check for changes and initiate some kind of action if changes are found. So first of all, I would like to make sure that this is actually working. So I will execute the shell and say something like uh, echo changes are found together with specifying where I am now. Uh, that's all that I will do right now, just to tell that our job is working. And the next thing I will do, I will need to add actually a new node. So this uh, mean I will uh, try to run this job non, uh, not on my Linux machine, but on my Mac. And actually I will click new node, dump slave, select for, as an option for this, I will name it like build machine. And this will be a link to my Mac. So I will need to specify a few things here. So the number of the executors will uh, say how much uh, kind of jobs I can run at the same time, uh, or how much instances of, of the same job. Uh, one is enough for me. So uh, root directory will be the directory on, on my uh, Mac PC, which uh, Jenkins will uh, kind of work in, uh, and in my case, so let me just specify some kind of uh, default, like users, the name of my user, and then the documents folder, and then there will be a folder called temp. Uh, so what else? I need to provide the host uh, IP address in order for it to connect through SSH and for me it will be 192.168.1 uh, and the credentials of course I will use different ones so I will need to provide my username and password Yeah, this credentials to connect it through SSH. Uh, basically, that's all. In, in the best case, it will be able to connect through SSH and uh, install the, the agent there. Uh, if not, then we'll see what will be the issue. So, yeah, connection refused. Let me check the SSH. Yeah, it looks like I disabled SSH. So let's try once again. So this time, as you see, the slave is connected and actually it is uh, Online, the only thing is uh, there is a two minutes clock difference because uh, I assume either Linux, either Mac is not syncing the time. But this is the, not not kind of the hugest issue that we may have. Uh, 
But of course, the best way would be to kind of synchronize the clock uh, by syncing with, with some um, time service, whatever. So the idea is uh, to specify actually inside my job on which node I will be running. So I can say and I can actually limit uh, the node that uh, I will be using to, to run this build on. So there are different options to, to do that, but the best, uh, the best one is to set up the additional plugin that will control uh, the node on which it will be running. So let's do that. Or uh, we can go in even forward and uh, in order not to overcomplicate it, go with the standard uh, filtering option. You can restrict uh, the plugins are able you actually to select when you are starting a job with parameters where you will run it. And the standard restriction just apply for, for all the jobs. So uh, you can specify, for example, here, uh, build machine and Let me check the name of this machine one second. Yeah, so basically the idea is after we said that it will be run only on, on built machine, when I will launch my job and I will do it right away, uh, it should schedule a new build and uh, actually run it on my machine. So uh, this will be on my host Mac. So first of all, as you can see, uh, it successfully managed to connect uh, to Git and uh, my build is finished. So I can see the console output. It's checked the Git and it's do the echo and PVD. So just as I expected, uh, which is uh, kind of excellent and exactly as I planned. So next thing I will need to do is actually I will need to run all those scripts so everything we prepared and everything that we go through in the first part of our session here in, in this job window in order to do the automated build. The only thing here is that actually uh, I will need to be sure that uh, my Jenkins is able to find the same things like uh, mobile first platform, but which is, this is not really needed right now. Uh, I mean, the command line interface. What is important for me now is actually and and it's called build. So uh, in order to, to make sure that it able to find that, so I need to go to manage Jenkins once again, go to my node build machine and add the variables. So I, I, I need to add information about uh, environment variables, specify a new variable called pass. And basically I would like to take everything that Jenkins uh, inside inside the pass plus the pass that I already have in my host machine. So I will just go to terminal and type echo pass and grab everything I have here and put it inside. So just like that. I will save this and let me modify my job with the same check that I was doing right at the beginning of the session. So which MFP, which AMD, which Xcode built. And let's run this. like build machine go offline so let's relaunch the slave yep so where is my job yeah so it completed successfully uh, it looks like I will be needed to fix the time delay otherwise it will be going offline from time to time but anyway uh, maybe I will still be in time to demonstrate you the results. 
So, uh, after we completed that uh, setup and we are now know that actually it is working, next step for us will be actually to, to do this uh, kind of real build. So, uh, I will open the text editor back again uh, with my description of what I was doing. And basically, uh, let me do the following. Let me do a build uh, with my uh, build XML. So, I will pass this as a first step. Uh, then, uh, as a next step, uh, I will do the actually preparation of of IPA and IPK file or or maybe even even better so let's let's do two separate jobs so the first one for build and uh, deploy to uh, mobile first platform server so like step one build step two deploy so this will build the app override with the parameters for our server deploy to mobile first platform server and then we will have a different job to do actually the, the build uh, to do actually the build of those binaries uh, API and APK and do the release of those binaries so in order to do a build we will need to kind of push the latest changes from, from repository and there are two options for doing that so either we will uh, make Jenkins uh, ask Jenkins to uh, Full changes from repository and there is uh, again either the plugin option either we can specify the action like um, like get the latest uh, sources from repository so it can not only check a repository for, for, for options but it also can download but uh, in order to simplify that because we already spent a lot of time for this uh, session uh, I will do the following I will actually manually add another step that uh, that will uh, kind of pull the changes from a server. So I will say uh, git pull uh, to pull it from from a server, and we will do it from, of course, region master. In our example. Uh, so this will actually grab the latest um, portion of, of data for me and uh, I will need to initiate this job only if there are changes in uh, code repository. So this is how it will look. Uh, it will look if there is a change, uh, it will uh, each minute look for this change and will try to uh, Pull, uh, we'll try to pull the, these changes and if there are some, uh, this job will be triggered. So in order to test how this thing will work uh, and uh, how this actually uh, will be working, I will need to uh, clone my repository in my virtual machine, change something, save the changes, put them to, to a repository, to remote repository and then we'll see if the job will launch or not and of course uh, before that I will need to navigate to folder because if I will just pull changes from where I am it will be the Jenkins home directory so it will be workspaces and then CI demo for me so this is how it looks uh, let's go back to our job one second I will check once again yeah, it seems to be correct. So um, now we can go to our job and uh, see the pulling log. So the pulling log will display the information of latest changes. Uh, as you see, uh, for now it says like no changes. So no build will be triggered. So right now I will be pulling the, the uh, I will try to clone repository and pull the change that I first level do and push back. So let me navigate to my workspaces and so let me do a clone of that project. So the correct link is this one.
Yes, yeah, so this is, this is my project. Let me make a small change. So inside my application, uh, my common app, I will have uh, maybe the small change in index file. So uh, let me change the index. And add something like hello mobile first. Mm, this is added from dev machine, pretending that we are on development machine. Let's close this. Uh, let me add this file to repository once again to track the changes. So uh, I will need to commit those changes now, but in order to do that, I need also to identify myself. So I will need to provide my login and email. So let me do it like uh, this git config minus minus global um, username will be my username to GitHub. Yes, and I will need also to provide email. And yeah, and now I can actually commit the changes with git commit minus m like change from developer so I've, I've added one file and now I need to push those changes to the server so let me do git push so again username Yeah, so this is my change committed and now let's go back to Jenkins to track and well as, as you can see actually it started the, the build so let me refresh the log yeah so git pulling says the changes are found so actually this is why the build was initiated so let's look uh, in the console what it says so git pull uh, uh, downloading the latest files, so this index.html, well, well, one file changed to insertions, then I'm doing the build, which is successful, excellent, then I'm doing deployment, which is uh, also should be successful, so let's check the mobile first platform uh, server. So, our console Session expired as always. Yeah, so as you see the latest build time which which says it's working, excellent. So uh, basically this means that our build is working, uh, which is really good, and we need also to make release working. So let's go back to our virtual machine and let's create a new job. Uh, so one more job saying release. Uh, this will again will be the freestyle project. So this won't be pulled uh, for, from SVN or Subversion or Git. I mean, uh, but uh, this will be launched manually when you just need to release and deploy uh, your IPK files. So. Uh, let me again restrict it to, to build mesh. Uh, so the actions that I will be adding, actually I will be uh, navigating to uh, to the native folders. So in one case it will be Android from the beginning. 
So I will go to Android folder and I will make actually the um, unrelease and then copy the apk file to release folder with replacing everything that is there and then I will do the same for iOS so just as we discussed previously with uh, all the file movements and everything and then we will add the uh, last step that uh, actually will do the release so we already did deployment so I will remove deployment from this list I will just do release so uh, the only thing I will need to change I will need to provide the full pass because the one shell command from second is totally disconnected so it won't understand where it was before um, basically that's that's uh, all that I need to to do right now so uh, as I said this job will be started manually each time I want so we, we just need to test if this will work or not uh, I will save the job and in order to make the, the clear test let's let's do the following uh, let's remove everything that we have in application center So I will delete both apps and let's also remove the app that I had in a folder I mean release folder so it will be the, the clear check and let's try to run this project to see if it's happened or not So, let's see from the beginning. So we started with uh, actually Android. I see that Xcode opens, uh, so it means that at least that step is now working. So Android release successful, then uh, Xcode opens successful. It looks like building is also happening. Uh, so I have all that building with all that, uh, a lot of data report. Uh, I see the archive actually failed and this is one of the issues that people are struggling with uh, so user interaction is not allowed. Um, basically it's happening because uh, Apple has a really interesting uh, kind of way of working with uh, user certificates uh, in the keychains and there are two ways to uh, kind of fix this error. First one is to create a separate keychain for your continuous integration server and then uh, kind of configure it to, to use your certificates by moving them and doing additional configuration. Uh, or the second one, the easy one, but of course not, not, not really fully correct from, from a security perspective to just grab those certificates and move them to the uh, system key chain instead of, of uh, login key chain where it's located by default. So we will follow the second uh, option and basically we will need to open the key chain. So you will need to add a keychain in this application called keychain access and you will need to provide the link to login keychain uh, which is located under keychains folder under your profile home directory folder. So uh, when actually you grab the login keychain you should navigate to certificates and search for, for iPhone certificates. Uh, well, in my case, it's like three of them that are valid. So I will copy all three of those and then I will need to open the system key chain. I will need to provide a password for that, of course. And basically then I will pass those uh, certificates here and close this. 
So basically that's uh, kind of the first step. So let's try to make a build. Uh, it should most probably fail again, but for different reason. Now, actual reason is the same because I forgot to open the, the keychain uh, for the user. I anyway need to do this. So, in order to do that, you need to uh, kind of prior to launching the build for, for iOS, uh, use the security. So, it look it should look like something like this. Uh, security unlock keychain then uh, minus p and password I changed it uh, before to, to dummy just for, for test purposes but of course uh, you will need to provide uh, your password real password and this is not a good way to, to just uh, put it as text so the good option will be to install the plugin in JetKiss that will hide the passwords in system settings and here you will just use the variable. So you need to provide a password and then you need to provide the pass to your keychain. And as I said, it's located under your users, uh, username, and then a library, and then keychains, and the keychain name and we will open the login first and then it will let us to main uh, to system I mean. so this is how it looks we will need to save this job and try to launch it once again So you saw that the hit was successful and yeah, now it's failing with uh, uh, EPA file because it was created with different permissions and it cannot override the file that was created by me uh, with the file that is created by Jenkins. So I need to remove the EPA file that I was creating initially from, from uh, my folders. So let's, let me just do this. So Yeah, and let's try again. So as you can see, it actually managed to complete the build successfully and it should upload the apps to the website. So let's check that, I mean, application center. Uh, 
and yeah the apps are there so excellent so basically uh, let's try to kind of run everything once again uh, from start to finish so I will delete those apps then I will clear up the console and time out again as always uh, I will delete the application here from application center so and I will also clean up the folder release folder yes so uh, now we can actually go back to our VM and let's try to do the same I mean uh, make some small change uh, to the files and in our case it will be this index file so let me add something like this is added two times uh, from the machine and let me commit the change and upload it to a server yeah so it's uploaded so let's check if the job will start So it should be the job number uh, job number five here. And we should have uh, it's launched uh, within a minute or something. Yes, yeah, so you see the latest uh, pulling log which has uh, it says changes found, so as we expected. And actually, it's starting our build and deploy. So this ended successfully. It means that we are able to check our application center. Uh, I mean, uh, our mobile first platform console first. And yeah, we see the apps uh, deployed there. And the second step is uh, let's try to release them. So let me line this build. So Xcode opened. Closed. Now the archive packaging signing and everything for, for iPhone and signing for Android. And basically we have our job completed. So let's see the latest information. Unfortunately, it's completed unsuccessfully. So let me check the log. I assume the error will be again with rewriting the app name. Yeah, I don't want to do so. So it looks like we will need to add the code to remove the EPA file at the end of our job. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, so let's remove that from here then it will be able to create it next time the job will be launched and now we will do it manually once again yeah so it's completed so let's try
Yep, so our job completed successfully. We should be able to see our Appian Application Center. Let's check. Yeah, so apps are there. Excellent. And let's try to rerun the job once again to verify that we fixed the issue with this uh, existing file. Yeah, so it's completed successfully once again. So uh, basically we've done what, what, what we need. So um, it, it wasn't super hard uh, as you as you was able to saw it. But of course there are things that you should know and I believe that this tutorial will help for those who, who are doing this first time. So we covered everything, we talked about the process in general, we tried uh, to do this uh, using command line interface and then we tried to automate it with Jenkins and we managed to do that through the integration with code repository on GitHub and we are now mention, um, able to, to do the automated triggering of our build and deploy and we also able to do a release uh, I decided to do release manually because, as I said, you're not always doing that, but of course, if you want, you can uh, automate that as a part of your build scenario. So it's up to you. So uh, basically, that's all that I was um, want, uh, wanted to show you. So thank you very much for, uh, for, for watching this. I know that it took me a lot of time, so I really appreciate that. I hope you will benefit from it. Thank you.